and I'm Josh. We've been married nine years. We've got two kiddos, Caden three and Maisie one. Josh is a firefighter. Tam's a stay-at-home mom. And we're both certified personal trainers through NASN. And Tam is also a nutrition coach through Precision Nutrition, and I'm currently working on my certification right now. And we are pleased to introduce you to our new project together, The Bushel Life. We plan to share our struggles and successes in both parenting and marriage, as well as our favorite products, workout, and recipes. We hope that you will follow along, subscribe to our channel, like our videos, and comment below. In order to better introduce you to our family, here's what's been happening in our life this last year. This past summer in 2015, Josh got a vasectomy. How did you feel about that? Not awesome. Kind of like a teenager who's about to get kicked in the junk. Uh, but we felt we had to do it. Tamara has uh, been dealing with varicose veins since Caden was born. And they got even worse as she was pregnant with Maisie. And she's also dealing with uh, some postpartum depression after Maisie was born as well. And the combination of those two things kind of led us to the decision to make that vasectomy happen. We didn't want her legs to get worse and we also wanted her to feel good the whole time. And, and so we made that decision. I also felt that um, if the future permitted that we would be able to foster or adopt because that's always been something that I've kind of wanted to do. And uh, in the state that we live in right now, it is a uh, definite need. Lots of, lots of foster parents or adoptive parents are needed. There's lots of kids that need help. And so I felt that we should go ahead and, and go on with this vasectomy. Uh, for those of you who don't know what a vasectomy is, it is the <laughs> best, closest to 100% way for a man to be able to ensure that his wife will not get pregnant. They uh, go inside, they uh, cut the vas deferens, and uh, solder them, or cauterize them, I guess is a better word. They cauterize them so that the, the sperm can't get to the semen, and that way you can't get your wife pregnant anymore. And <laughs> so I had that done, and uh, it was not awesome, but it was going to be the best way to ensure that we didn't get pregnant again. And I have to say that as we were driving to that appointment, that was the most nervous I've ever seen you. I thought you might puke in the car. <laughs> when we were going to the appointment. Puking right now thinking about it. But you did it. Yeah. And after you had that done, a few months later, you had to get tested for your sperm count and what happened with that? Oh yeah, so after uh, you have your vasectomy, to ensure that you're not gonna get pregnant again, uh, a couple of months afterwards, after you've uh, gone through everything that you're supposed to do by the doctor's recommendations, <laughs> you uh, go back for uh, sperm count uh, and uh, so I had two zero sperm counts which is supposed to ensure that I'm not gonna have to get pregnant again that we're not gonna get pregnant I shouldn't be able to get her pregnant for the third time <laughs> so we were good to go and um, in November of last year God completely just changed my mind and my whole view on the fostering system and um, just what that would mean for our family if we were to become foster parents. So we ended up taking an orientation class through Arizona 127, which if you don't know what that is, it is a local organization which partners with churches in around the valley um, just to help people become more aware of foster parenting and adoption and how you can help a child and their family in need. So we took our orientation class in November, and after that class, we just felt super strongly that this is what God was wanting for our family. So we ended up letting our family know, and we decided that moving forward in this process, we were gonna stick with the birth order of our biological children. So Caden would always be the oldest, Maisie would always be the second oldest. So that meant with the age that Maisie was, that we would be looking at bringing in an infant, a baby into our home. So by December of last year, we had picked out an agency. We selected Christian Family Care. Uh, we signed up for our PS Map class, which if you don't know what that is, that is the licensing class that you go through in the state of Arizona to become a foster parent. This is a 30-hour, 10-week class that you go to. And so we signed up to take our class in February of this year. So by the time our class rolled around, Three weeks into our class, we had got our home inspection done. We passed our home inspection, and one of the parts of the home inspection is to have 
a room ready for the child. So we had a crib ready in a bedroom and we had a dresser ready. Among, all done. All done, among with other things. So we were in the process of like really nailing all this stuff down and getting it ready to go. So that by this time, probably two weeks into May, potentially towards the end of May of this year, 2016, we were looking into having an infant in our home fostering. So we were super excited all on course. So several days after our home inspection, we had passed it. I was in the process at this point of getting my varicose veins retreated again. It's something I have to go through every year just to get them rechecked and looked at. And at these appointments, they always ask, is there a possibility that you are pregnant or are you breastfeeding? I for sure wasn't breastfeeding and I knew I couldn't be pregnant because Josh had had a vasectomy, but I did realize that at this point I was two weeks late in my period. So because I had this appointment coming up, <laughs> I asked Josh if he would pick up a pregnancy test at the store. What? Which, yeah, was his response like, why do you want me to spend $10 on a test? My line of thinking was, well, if I'm not pregnant, there's obviously something else going on with me and I'll need to go to the doctor anyway. So he came home with the test, he went out in the backyard and was playing with the kids, I went into the bathroom, went to the bathroom, peed on the stick, immediately the test results came back positive that we're pregnant and we're going to be having another baby. I was in complete shock at that point, It, I just was in shock, I couldn't even, I don't even know, like I went outside and I told Josh and I said, can you please look at this? And his response was he threw his hands up in the air and he said, I have super sperm. He was so excited, so ecstatic, so happy. And I was just, I was just in shock still. So our next step was I needed to call my OB just to have another test done because I wanted to confirm that this was actually happening. So within 15 minutes, we packed the kids up in the car, drove to my OB's office, and I had a urine sample done there that came back positive. They were like, congratulations, you're pregnant. They could tell I was completely in shock, so they said, we can do a blood test just to, to confirm that this is happening for you. And I said, yes, please. So I had the blood test done. Um, two days later, the test came back. Again, congratulations, all your levels look great. Everything is on course. Again, I was still in shock. I did not think that this had the potential to be happening. And they told me on the phone, well, we can have you go in for an early ultrasound just to make sure everything looks good and just to help you see that there's a baby inside of you. So a week later, I had my early ultrasound done, saw the little heartbeat inside my uterus, and like, what can you say? I'm totally pregnant. And this baby is such a miracle to us. Um, I feel like just now I'm just starting to get over the shock of it. I'm still in shock, but I'm not as much in shock now as I was. But we're both super happy and super excited, and we'll find out the gender of this baby in a little over a month. But um, Josh, what ended up happening then? How, how did I get pregnant? I mean, I know how I got pregnant, but... <laughs> Birds and the bees. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I had... I've healed. I've had what's <laughs> called a late recanalization. Uh, which is highly unusual, especially, especially after two zero sperm counts. My doctor was super surprised, and uh, he said, uh, obviously, they wanted to find out if that baby was mine or not. So I had to go and do my re-sperm counts, and I was throwing about two, two million, two point five million, or something like that, and uh, which is still low. It's really low. But it's enough to get you pregnant. Pregnant, yeah. And so. Basically, I healed, mm -hmm. and now I get to go have the pleasure of an <laughs> another vasectomy, which... But yeah. now you know what you're doing this time. Yeah, so I'll so, sweat, and I'll still pee yeah. in the way that I or feel like <laughs> I'm going to, because it doesn't feel any different. They're still going to the same area to cut. So, anyway, here we go. <laughs> so, vasectomy number two on the way. So here's what <laughs> happened in the last year, basically, to sum up of our life. Josh had a vasectomy. We decided that we were going to become foster parents. Um, we got the baby's room ready, passed our home inspection, discovered that I was unexpectedly pregnant, 
And now Josh is going to go have another vasectomy done. And our plans for fostering are being put on hold at this time until this baby um, is a little bit older. So that's what's happened in the last year of our life. We really hope that you guys will follow along with these vlogs that we post. We're super excited to share our life with you. Um, and we hope that if you want a topic covered, that you leave a comment below. We're more than happy to answer questions or to do a vlog about that. But thank you so much for watching and we will see you again next time.